Hey everybody. The first thing I want to do is thank my supporter for making a very nice donation a couple of days ago. With that, I went and ordered a 10 by four sheet of 16 gauge aluminum, which will con contribute greatly to the aft end of the flight deck construction progress. As you can see, I've Got a little bit of work done on phase five. We've gone from a, a curvature to a straight line. This is all framed in. It's not permanently welded. I typically don't do that until everything's in place because there's always a lot of shifting. One thing I don't understand about this canopy is these measurements, I have two different measurements on these frames. One is from the, the top to the top over here. And then I have another dimension, which is from the bottom frame to the bottom frame. And they're all pretty much exact. However, when it comes time to actually installing them, you can see that they don't ever, they're never straight. But the way I'm going to address that is once I've got everything and where it needs to be, so everything makes sense and it looks the way it's supposed to be. Then I'm gonna go back and move these ever so slightly because when you look at this thing from the side, I want it to take on, you know, an absolutely perfect line, given the fact that I've put so much work into this. Take a little time to point out T boxes. T boxes, T stands for test. What these were used for was to for the pilots to test the electrical continuity of the weapons, specifically the weapons found in the universal racks, atomic weapons. Oh, they're not very fancy. They're just a gauge, toggle switches, a fuse holder, a potentiometer, push to test lamps, uh, lighting panels or lighting bowl holders for the lighting panels. And that's pretty much it. They're not very magical. There's not a lot of literature about them just a few things mentioned in a technical order every once in a while. I do have a really nice offensive B-36 armament book that's got the only picture I've ever seen of this up here. Of course, I have four T-boxes. That indicates there's four weapons and the four bomb bays. These snap rings up here. These are to allow the navigator to attach a curtain, which would completely surround the Astrodome. And so the illuminated gauges and panels wouldn't blind him when he's searching for a specific star. And that's so he wouldn't blind the pilots when they're looking for a runway. Well, I guess they wouldn't be looking for stars when they're looking for the runway, but you get the point. There's also gonna be a snap ring right here that follows this line. That allows for the flight engineers curtain so their panel would not blind the pilots. Eventually, I'm going to get to making these cons or, uh, quadrants. They have four potentiometers that deliver an electrical signal to whatever controlled the jets. Nothing mechanical. Up here, there's going to be some nuts that they would use to twist that would torque or loosen the, the tightness, I suppose, of those throttle levers. I haven't built them yet simply because that'd be just one more thing to hit my head on. Surprised I haven't hit my head on this day, Dad. This is gonna be covered in really thick rubber once it's done. This is out of a real B36. This is just a standard communication panel. With these, anyone in the crew could listen to the aircraft commander. They could listen to the liaison radio, the command radio, or just anywhere in the airplane in general. Some are more complex than the others. This is your pretty standard one this is for like the gunners the navigator and so on you got your control for your panel lights that dims them your sextant light your vent fan what that is is during ground operations the astrodome could be removed and they would insert a fan in here and that fan would ventilate the flight deck and the rest of the airplane the navigator had a clipboard that would hang up over here i'll have to make that it would fold down and he could take notes and whatnot. 
so he wouldn't blind the rest of the, the flight crew, he had this little flashlight. This flashlight is on this cord, not only to power it, but also so he would not lose it because you would not want to be running around on the flight, flight deck. Well, looking for a flashlight and blinding people. This is your, can't think of what those are called. Shame on me. Cannon plugs. That is the power for the aforementioned ventilation fan for the Astrodome. Jet panel is identical to the real deal. If I haven't mentioned it earlier, these screws are the same. They're used on the real B36, as are most of my fasteners. You loosen these with a quarter turn. This panel drops down to allow access. I've got vintage push to test lamps up here. Just need to find some heads. You populate these with toggle switches and it'll be done. Not to mention some circuit breakers up front. I thought about pulling this down and dummy wiring all the circuit breakers and stuff up there to give it the look of a B36 when if you were to pull it down. I don't know if I'm gonna get there or not. I really don't. I don't think I mentioned that these tea boxes, number one, these are vintage specimens and these are replicas that I've made. Those were developed by Sandia Labs in New Mexico, the same laboratories that the ones that took the atomic bomb information and they, they're the ones who developed the casing so they could fit in the airplanes. They developed the, the bomb racks, the loading equipment. I guess they were kind of the liaison between Los Alamos and the Air Force in terms of getting stuff from there to the airplanes. These tea boxes were actually made by Grimes Incorporated. A lot of stuff was made by Grimes. Something that I've yet to venture into purchasing, which they're very expensive. You can see here, these are called eyebrow lamps. These are also a later type of illumination for flight decks. There's two little light bulbs in there and you can flip a switch and you could dim them elsewhere in the flight deck. That would illuminate your gauge. Every one of these will eventually have a Grimes hood on them, but I'm in no hurry. Tomorrow I should have the last lateral frame up. Once again, I'm gonna to have to devise a way to be able to bolt the forward and aft sections of the flight deck together for when I move. Right now with this out here, she's sitting at about, oh, 100 inches. I think that's about it for today. I'll see y'all next time.